This week on the Stogie Geek Show, we smoke a recent, uh, this year anyway, addition to the Padron 1964 line that comes in some beautiful square tubes. Uh, we're going to talk about resources to learn about cigars, and we're going to do our Stogies of the Week. All that and more, so stay tuned for this episode of the Stogie Geek Show. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from Villiger North American Studios, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Hat tip, can we play it? Yeah, one more time. Can I hear a... Yes! Yes! Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy the dirt! Guests and friends here in studio, including a regular cast of characters, Mr. Joe Hollywood to my right. How are you? That's awesome. Joe D's here. Rain Man's here. Happy What's going on, I Joe D? Table discussions. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Welcome, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. I'm your host, Paul Asadorian. Very, very excited to be here today. I'm with Mr. Joe Hozempa. Joe Hollywood's here with us. What's going on, dude? How are you? How's everything going? Hey, you know, I'm fantastic. We're sitting here smoking cigars, drinking some coffee, and we've got some fabulous Padron cigars to smoke today, which I'm excited about. In fact, uh, if you guys can switch to my laptop, I got my laptop connected into the uh, into the system here. I'm just gonna I'm gonna slide over a little bit. Hey, look at that! Look at that! That's my. That's, isn't that cool? That's a great feature. That's cool. That's what we're smoking today. Uh, it's the uh, the new Padrones. Uh, well, I say new because they just come in next door. They were announced at IBCPR. And there are two new line extensions, two new sizes uh, of the Padron 19. 64 line they come in maduro and natural and one hold on i have the the sizes here as well uh one is the soberano hold on let me bring it up here sorry so there's a soberano 5 by 52 maduro and natural and the uh presidente 6 by 50 sizes these are of course uh, Nicaraguan uh, Maduro and natural wrappers they come in. We're smoking the Maduro Presidente for this show. And uh, it's, of course, by Padron, so they're all Nicaraguan uh, wrapper binder filler uh, and done in the Padron factory, of course. So pretty cool. I'm excited it's a new to size. This. Yeah. I like the 64. It's, it's, a, it's a lighter cigar mm -hmm. um, than you would think for a Nicaraguan, like for uh, – uh, Nicaraguan, as Nicaraguan cigars go, there's not a lot of spice, not a lot of pepper in the 64 series. Uh, it's just a very smooth, really, really good cigar. It is good. These seem not as square pressed, too. You no, notice that? It's, it's almost like got that. like an oval. Yep. Yeah, it's got that. It's uh, when, when when you light it off the bat, it's 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 a it's a mild Nicaraguan. You can definitely mm. taste it. Trying to get that taste because it's it is it is slightly different so far. This could almost be like a breakfast cigar. Mm. I like breakfast the champions. Padrones Padron. for breakfast. <laughs> Padrones for breakfast. Uh, I'll I'll talk about it in my stogies of the week. I I revisited. I bought a box of a a Padron favorite that we've talked about on the show. You did. I did. Okay. Remind me to talk about that. What's going on? We're pointing and stuff. Yeah, we're pointing behind the set. Uh, Lift my mic. Sure. Can you adjust the fan? Put it up. Thank you. Now, now that we're, <laughs> now that we're, we're just on full we're, fledged adjustment, we're all trying to be like incognito. Just yeah. lift it up. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. And then get us, We need some bourbon. Too, right, I think. That, is, uh, there we go. We're good. We're good. We're good. Two bourbons. <laughs> Neat, well, please. I was trying to be all stealth. You, you know. <laughs> <laughs> doing the sign language Not thing. Not only do I need to learn Spanish lessons, being the co-host, now I need to learn sign, sign language. language. <laughs> <clears throat> we should have gone over all this in the uh, in the contract. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> all righty. So that's our cigar of the week. Um, obviously, with the different sizes, they've tweaked the blend to be um, to be specific to the size. Mm -hmm. uh, so you will get a, a little different experience, I think, than other sizes in the 1964 line. Uh, I didn't notice huge differences. Some people say these are a little milder. I don't. I don't necessarily think that's the case. I think this is pretty much in line. Yeah. I also still think that the 1964 pyramid size is my favorite 
1964 series Padron. Yeah. You ever seen that one? It's like a, uh, it's, it's a full taper. It's yeah, a square it go, pressed. Yeah. Uh, it's a square pressed perfecto, almost. Not even really. It's just a square pressed, but it starts fat and gets and skinny gets all the way down. Yeah. Hey, look at that. I was just like half joking about the bourbon, but oh, I could definitely use some bourbon look at that. All after right. today. Thank you very much. Cheers. 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 Here's to a good show. Mm. Now we have bourbon. Now it's now it's complete. I, I developed this, like further developed my taste for bourbon I was in Louisville. Or Louisville, as they call it. Yeah, it's a great combo. That's good. What is it? That's the Jefferson Ocean? I don't know. We don't want <laughs> you left. Uh, <laughs> I think that's the Jefferson's <laughs> Ocean um, seventh bottling, which is a, it is. It's very it is, good bourbon. Yeah. It's very good. It's got a good finish. Okay. We're going to talk today about um, cigar education resources. <clears throat> now, Joe, you've been going through some of the Tobacconist University, which is my probably top pick. Like, this is if you want to learn about cigars. I'm not talking about listening to podcasts, which is one thing you should do. Of course, Dave uh, Garofalo at the uh, Cigar Authority <clears throat> does a fantastic podcast. Um, and there's several <clears throat> cigar pod- podcasts out there. Excuse me. Cigar Jukebox. So many others that I'm forgetting. Mm-hmm. Um Maybe we'll do a whole show about other cigar podcasts, um, and, and that's one way to consume it. There's a lot of good cigar blogs out there. Um, you know, of course, uh, Will Cooper, Cigar Coop, great news resource as well as reviews. Mm-hmm. Half Wheel also tackles the news. They're even, a, <coughs> I know it's a little more news heavy, but still have reviews. Um, and I rely on those two resources to figure out, like when I was researching this cigar, when was it, <coughs> excuse me. When was it released? And things like that. Yep. Uh, this one was, was released. This released? 20, the, the IPCPR. IPCPR. Um, hold on. 17, right? Uh, I want to make sure before I okay. uh, do that. It says it goes national in May 10th of 2017. Mm-hmm. So maybe this was a, a 16 IPCPR announcement, and it didn't hit the shelves until May 27. Oh wait, this order will get released to all patron retailers following the 2017 IPCPR convention <clears throat> and trade show. Mm-hmm. I know yeah. that some of the local retailers. Uh, it must have just came in this region. Yes, because you know, as when you subscribe to the local tobacconist retailers, I've been getting mm. emails coming in, and, right. and they're they're pushing this pretty hard. Uh, you know. It, Hot, it's exciting. Meaning. We get a new Padron, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, whenever you get a new Padron, you know, uh, a lot of it kind of raises a bunch of uh, ears and people pay attention to the message. Padrones sell. I yeah, mean, yeah, they do. Have you talked to a shop where they're like, yeah, we're not really selling Padrones, <laughs> right? I, often in shops, they're like, can you, you know, the the business standpoint, they don't have a sales rep here locally. They right. Go, I was like, yeah, yeah, if you're a shop, you, you need Padron. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. yeah, yeah, you know, Absolutely. and if People you're going to come looking and for if it. you're a cigar smoker at any level, you owe it to yourself to get into the brand. Mm. It's one of those just staple brands. A lot of people uh, use this type of a cigar as a celebratory cigar. It's not an everyday smoke. Yeah, because these for, are expensive. What's the price for point? For some people. Um, we didn't talk about the price point. Sorry, we're going to go back into our cigar of the week. Um, the Soberano is 1450 and the Presidente is $15.50. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. It's still in that Padron range, but, I mean, you know, it's... It's, it's not outrageous. It's not like some it, of their um, family reserve lines. Right. The half, roughly half the cost of some of their other... Um, I wouldn't say limited. I would call them uh, special cigars, mm-hmm. Family Reserve and others. And uh, I, I think they're, you know, fantastic. You should have some on hand. Now I'm for starting sure. to get the creamy. Uh, yeah, definitely change in that, in that. I don't know if it's the bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's bourbon like, has coated our palates. You know, but it, it's it's starting to kick in as as we just light it right in the beginning of the show. So, you know, it's it's starting to kick in nicely. It is. Oh yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Yeah. It's. Um, so what was I saying? So the, there's podcasts, there's blogs, and they all take a different uh, take. Um, I use podcasts for my general listening to understand what's happening, listen to interviews, right? Mm-hmm. So it's good. Um, maybe some educational component might be there. Um, most of the blogs I read are primarily for news, uh, also reviews, and I'll read multiple blogs to figure out what the overall stance is on the, a particular cigar, what the overall opinion is. But then there's really 
one we haven't talked about too much, and that's where do we go to learn about tobacco mm-hmm. as it relates to cigars? And, like, don't Google search for tobacco because you get a bunch of anti-tobacco nonsense. Sure. So I think it's, it's sometimes it can be hard to find to weed through some of that stuff. Uh, where do you go to learn about cigars, cigar rolling, um, the process, the different plants, the different wrapper? A lot of the conversations we've had on this show, where do you go to read about that stuff and learn? And I certainly have resources that I've used in support of this show, whether it's a topic that we're talking about, just us, or whether we're preparing for an interview as we've had uh, somewhat recently this year. You know, We've had some pretty awesome blenders like Manuela Noah was the most recent one on the show and I like to prep for these and if they have a cigar coming out with a certain process or a certain wrapper or a certain uh, leaf, I like to read about that. Where do you go to learn about that stuff? I think it's important for all cigar smokers to at least have some fundamental knowledge of primings, leaf types, plant types, seed types, the whole, the mm-hmm. whole different plant and seed type would be the same thing, right? Um, have some fundamental knowledge, cigar construction, uh, wrapper, binder, filler, how it's put together, that the whole process, right? Uh, so where do you go? Tobacconist University, my number one pick. Now, you've been doing some Tobacconist University stuff, and you can go back to Stogie Geeks. I'm going to play the role of Rain Man. Okay. Now, I'm not Rain Man, so I had to put it in the show notes. <laughs> what, the episode? <laughs> yeah, so um, <clears throat> Stogie Geeks, episode 164. I sat down with Jorge Amenteros. Uh, from Tobacconist University. He's the founder of Tobacconist University. In the show <coughs> excuse me, wiki.stogiegeeks.com. You can go to the show notes. I put a link there to the YouTube video uh, interview that we did with Jorge. Fantastic. Awesome interview. Stogie Geeks number 164. He runs Tobacconist University. Joe, what have your experiences been so far with Tobacconist University? Well, tobacco, well first of all, when you first log on to the website, you, you if you're... It, it, it kind of reminded me of getting a college syllabus when you enrolled me in the program. Yes. So it was like, oh. So you actually <laughs> logged in and you have a, an actually, extra account. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you, you, when I started, probably it was April or May with, with uh, Stogie mm. Geeks after we did our first quarter and stuff like that. I was enrolled. And, and you know, when you first start out, it, it's it's like get if, if you ever been to any form of uh, further education beyond high school, it gives you a kind of curriculum, and mm-hmm. the website is loaded with stuff. But what I like about the website as well, before you even think about enrolling yourself within that curriculum, browse through the site. It's it, it's a good read to kind of get the history, um, how the farms are dealing with, what they're dealing with, all the basic stuff that we talk about here in the interview. There's a lot of free resources on oh, Tobacco totally. University. Yep. To, yeah. uh, to, uh, totally. And then in regards to the curriculum, you, you, it gives you a, a, a book. It's the Tobacconist Handbook is the name of the book. Great book. Yep. Uh, it's actually in my little briefcase thingy I yeah. carry around. Yeah. You know, because I'm almost done with that, and, and I'm pretty much r- ready to take the test. And and, and, and you learned a lot about there. pipe tobacco and pipes, too, in there. Learned See, that's a lot in about there. pipe tobacco. Because it's it, not Cigar University. It's Tobacconist University. Right. So Jorge wants us to know about pipes and pipe tobacco, too. So I learned a right. lot about pipes it's, and pipe it's, tobacco. It's actually amazing because in another gig I have, I'm actually helping someone – who bought a older tobacco company. So it's kind of neat mm. when I was doing the blends and seeing seeing the blends being rebirthed from the original uh, daughters, you know, from the original mm-hmm. owner and understanding what's going into an actual pipe tobacco blend. Yeah. Uh, started, oh, yeah. bought a pipe, started going down that avenue. Did I you mean, recently uh, buy a pipe? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Re, re, uh, you know, when I owned the cigar shop, I used to have a pipe every once in a while. I was going to ask you that. Yeah. Did you sell pipe tobacco in your yeah. shop? Oh, yeah. yeah. We, we actually had um, one of our popular blends we had was called Jamie's Blend. Mm-hmm. It was from a bunch of friends that, that uh, the guy ended up liking it. And lo and behold, you know someone who has passed, who's been a patron of the shop. Yeah. And it's funny because... I closed the shop in 2002, mm-hmm. and I still have Jamie's Blend and other pipe tobaccos really? in my office. Oh, there. break so, them out. We're so, going to have to do a pipe so, show. So it's, it, it's pretty neat. It's, it's, you know, pipe tobacco. I used to smoke pipe tobacco a lot within the winter, mm-hmm. especially when, when you own a retail shop. You're just smoking cigar, cigar, mm-hmm. cigar, cigar. There comes a point where you're going to be like, you know, I'm just taking a week off and I'm just going to go pipe. Your palate mm. just needs something different. Yeah, I got you. You know, uh, I found it more enjoyable to smoke a pipe in fall and winter months mm-hmm. there 
Uh, ironically, pipe tobacco goes great with wine. Interesting. Um, you Interesting. Know, I like wine, so yeah. maybe that's what you know. It goes great with with bourbon, but it's it's a different it's a different um, type of smoke for it sure. Is. Yeah, for sure. It's a type different, a different type, type of, smoke of tobacco. Wine. Right, and then also I've been going to. Um, pipe events like for for the Cape Cod Sherlock Holmes mm -hmm. event, they're in Fall River. It is the mm -hmm. closest to Cape Cod where they come down and stuff like that. And and it's amazing how you know just as we talk about you know uh, sticks and stogies and mm -hmm. plants and and region, they get that fanatical about that. There's a whole argument within that culture of bulk versus tinned. Mm -hmm. Some people like the tin. I mean, I, I, I always thought that the the best, uh, speaking of tobacco in university and learning about pipe tobacco, and then I, I started uh, dabbling in pipes, and I find that the store blends that you talked about, like mm -hmm. you had Jamie's blend. Yep. Um, there's a, a gold, something gold blend uh, at another local uh, Janice shop. She came on and talked about the history of her pipe tobacco blends that, mm -hmm. that they do, and it's super secret. Um, but they have a really popular uh, blend there. And the, I find that those are the best. I think Joyles has one, too, that they, they prefer. So they're like their top seller is some kind of blend. Yep. That I, I don't know if they put it together or someone else put together. I find those are always the best uh, pipe blends. It, 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 bulk tobacco, it, it's, it's a different world. I mean, I, I've bought some... Some tin stuff yeah, that I the like, tins are like, convenient. like uh, especially by Dunhill, very popular name. Yep, they have uh, Davidoff a, used to make some pipe tobacco yep, too. I've had some of that. That was really Drew's good. Drew's in that game as well. Drew, I bought one of those Drew Estate pipes. Yep. I have one. I really like it. Yeah. I also have a more traditional Peterson uh, pipe mm -hmm. as well. You know, uh, it's it's amazing because I'm I'm sworn as someone who does their creative marketing, I have to describe the blends, but yeah. I know the blends. Right, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, I did sign a non-disclosure on a lot of the blends. That's cool. You, you know, probably did better with the pipe tobacco stuff in Tobacco and his University than I did. Cause I well, never, it, I, was, I mean, it was fascinating, but, I mean, you want to talk about, like, uh, for, from, a, from a consumer perspective, uh, demographically, you know, when you talk from a business model, yeah. uh, much older Yes. Generation does that. But it's starting to come back a little bit, too. Yeah. You, you know, know what's funny? When I was uh, in Louisville for the conference, I was smelling my friend's travel humidor. And I'm like, dude, it has like a musty smell. I'm like, I'm like did you put pipe tobacco in there, too? Oh, that's a no-no in the humidor. And he goes, no. Right. And I look up and want <laughs> some other dude is smoking a pipe right there. Oh, yeah. I just oh, happened oh, to catch him. like, <laughs> I smell pipe. Oh, you're smoking a pipe. And I was, I was really close. The first time I ever really... Had been an event where there's largely cigar smoking, and, and, and lo and behold, someone's smoking a pipe. So yeah, I put a, I made the uh, great mistake that I have a, I have a leather, uh, old leather, um, fits two, holds two cigars. You usually put in your pocket yeah. if you go to a wedding you put and whatnot. Tobacco in, did no, you? no, no, no. I when I stored it, I stored it with my bulk tobacco. Just you know, you're yeah. going to storage. Nope. And when I got it back, and then I, and then I started using it. Being uh, coming on Stogie Geeks and getting sticks from either you or people getting mm -hmm. sticks and whatnot, and I'm like, why does that like it? It always had like the same taste, and I was like, it's the pouch, mm -hmm. and so I took it out. I still have it aired out. I stick it outside. It's been four months now, and it still smells like pipe. It tobacco. still smells like pipe. One of my travel cases, I put t pipe tobacco in for a long time, and I can't get the smell out. Mm -hmm. Like, I, and I haven't. I think what I need to do is put something in there that's odor. Absorbing like baking soda or something like not actually well maybe if there's plastic on the inside I would actually put baking soda in it mm. and close it up for a while because I, I can't get it now I'm carrying some of my cigars in it now which is kind of interesting if they stay in there too long the, you will get that aroma when you smoke them you yeah. don't necessarily taste it but you definitely can smell it you on can the cigar smell it on so the like cigar. I can't really use that anymore for cigars what I did was I had a little 15 count humidor plastic mm -hmm. one Pelican case mm -hmm. there. And when I expanded to a bigger Pelican case, yep. uh, there I actually use that just for the pipe tobacco. And you can't use it for anything else. No, ever well, again. like once it goes in, it's it's uh, it, it's a, it's amazing how even on the plastic pieces you cannot get that smell out. Yeah. So you know, it's don't, pretty amazing. So uh, for those people who you know say they buy a 50 count humidor and they stick some pipe tobacco in there too, yeah. that will make a huge difference. You want to keep that separate for sure. But yeah, the Tobacco Industry University, like I said, it, it it's got a great, great uh, layout of information. There's a ton of free resources there as well. So I would start there. 
but I also compiled a list of some other resources and, and some forums that could be a good resource to you as So well. I also have JR University, which comes from JR Cigars, mm -hmm. is a resource that I've gone back to um, in, the, in the past few years, and they've got what they call Cigar School, and they've got uh, the parts of the cigar, wrapper, binder, filler, cigar characteristics, uh, how cigars are made, uh, and a whole bunch of articles. If you go to jrcigars.com forward slash blending dash room forward slash university, this is all in the show notes, uh, and you go to their cigar school, um, they've got 13, 14, 13 lessons on cigars and one on pipes, mm -hmm. uh, which is interesting. So I've used this as a resource uh, in the past for the show, uh, so I wanted to make sure I included it in there. So that's a good one as well. Um, also, uh, the one that I really like, too, is Cigar Advisor. That's this by Famous, Famous Smoke. Yep. yep. Um, has that was a, one of mine. Yeah. It has a division, right, where uh, they put together all kinds of articles. Now, it's arranged in somewhat of a blog format. So I've mostly come across this when Google searching for various topics. Like if I'm Google searching, we're going to do a segment on Sumatra Wrapper. Um, I almost always hit on the Cigar Advisor page, and they'll have an article about Sumatra wrappers. Uh, so, but even if you just want to go like browse through all the different categories in here, it's fantastic. It's a very, very well done resource. They've got a, a videos that accompany it as well, as well as a lot of great uh, articles on all kinds of topics. Uh, for example, one's how to winning at online cigar auctions, you know, all the way to um, cigar occasions. But there's a lot of education in here <coughs> as well, Yep, which for I that, like. For that one, they just go to famoussmoke.com forward slash cigar advisor. That's right. Which is the one I had. Uh, and I think that was a good move on Famous to do that educational piece. Well, I mean, you know, uh, business-wise, you keep them on your website. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So uh, definitely. Another one I came up with that I've actually used in the past, pre-Stogie Geeks, um, probably, I'm trying to think of the date, probably like 2011, 12, is uh, Monte Cristo Social Club. Oh, interesting. So Monte Cristo Social Club, you go to MonteCristoSocialClub.com. I will update my wiki notes as well right after the show. But Monte Cristo Social Club, um, you can sign up. Uh, you, get, you, get, you get a username. You get a password. You go through. And then um, at the time when they, were, when they were launching the site, they actually gave away if you passed a uh, curriculum with them, I think off the top of my head, it was five different le lessons, mm -hmm. you know, all about uh, parts of the plant, where it's grown, the regions, it tells mm -hmm. a story, it gives, they're all uh, out in five or six different lessons, probably about once a year, I get an email, oh, by the way, there's a new lesson, <clears> you know, so yep. it might be six or seven now, but then you get to take a test, mm -hmm. and uh, with, well, you take the test right online, do it there. And then uh, you can actually print out a certificate and all that stuff. But if you went through the original curriculum, they gave you a gold Monte Cristo. It's kind of like a, a, it's almost like a key to the city. It, mm -hmm. it, it's a gold key where you turn it on the Monte Cristo thing and it comes out. It's actually a big hole puncher. Uh, so so they gave that cool. to you. They gave yeah. you a, they gave you a membership card and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But but what I liked about that site is at the time, 2010, is mm -hmm. when um, from my perspective, definitely not from your perspective, but forums were starting to get <laughs> pretty popular. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, so, forums have always been popular right, for, for, since the dawn of the yeah, internet. Yeah, yeah. yeah with, 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 with you, your security side, I get it. But from, from yeah, most of regular just, users, like, most oh, of they were just well, getting hacked into. Yeah, <laughs> over, you know, what's over a forum? But, but it allows you to, you know, you can post a picture, you set up a profile, you do that. And I've, and I've met some, some good friends along the way. You know, you, you can friend each other and all yeah. that. It's kind of like a, a social. It, There's it, a lot of things like that for cigars. Yeah. You That's know, probably a different segment to cover the. Yeah, but. I'm not, I was never big into the, the cigar forums, but. You know, well, I mean. You know, you, you always get someone who, you know, loves a brand or if they're a sales rep, hey, you got to try this yeah, little yeah. over here, you know. There's uh, a lot of um, there's a lot of good networking, yep. a lot of good information. There's also uh, a fair share of shenanigans sure. that happen on forums as well <laughs> uh, and a lot of rules and, and things like that. And they're all different rules and different shenanigans on all the different forums. Some are more 
um, about sharing information. Some of them were about trading cigars mm -hmm. uh, and buying and selling and trading cigars uh, to, to be more accurate. And then it's hard to know who to trust. So was a, there was that whole thing. It can be a good way to find cigars that you're looking for. However, there's an entire culture that some people, a lot of people really like. I just could never find the time to really like become part of that culture of a, a forum because mm -hmm. there is a time commitment there, I think. Um, also, you know, Facebook groups uh, have been become popular mm -hmm. lately. Um, so that can be a good resource for you as well. Um, in it, they, I believe, also let you trade cigars and buy and sell cigars to each other inside of the forum. Uh, I don't know if Facebook has pulled the plug on that or not, but... I think because um, I'm still a member of some people friend you and mm -hmm. want you to become part of that, especially with the start of this show, people looking me up and, and, and inviting you and to inviting groups, me yep. in, in, into the groups. I think if it's a closed group, it's fine. They're, they're, they're okay with it because yeah. they're still up and people, you know, pe people buy and sell and trade yep. and stuff Reddit, like that. Reddit too is another resource. Reddit's Reddit. kind of like the new forum, yep. right? It's yep. kind of the new... Um, Another one I it's used. A, similar to a forum, but not really. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a cross between a forum and a social media outlet. Would be Is a good really? way for me to describe Reddit. Yeah. yeah. Well, some of the other ones that, that come to mind are, have have that too. I mean, I guess it would make sense, you know, if the technology is there. You're, 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 sharing, you're sharing your thoughts on a feed, right? It's true. Help, help me out with like, the technical well, no, part, No, yeah, but right? forums were kind of like the first... Um, it was kind of like the early social media mm -hmm. were forums, and I feel like forums are not largely being replaced, but um, social media has allowed uh, more and different people to gravitate towards being in that social environment because mm -hmm. it's part of a social network that you would join to share information about yourself and new friends and family, and now you can just make that an extension of your uh, cigar experience uh, as well. So Reddit, Facebook are primarily where I see um, – Folks hanging out. It was kind of cool. We used to do a Google Hangout and just oh, yeah. and herf on cigars. That was fun. Yep. Yep. Hangouts got kind of weird, though. I don't know what happened to Hangouts. Maybe they maybe they still have them. I've just lost touch. But Or herfs, for that matter. I yeah. remember um, probably around the same time, 2010, maybe 2009, uh, I was, I guess they were called ambassadors for a brand. Yeah, brand. So they it, do. So it was Altidus. They, they will would, appoint brand ambassadors, yep. and they'll send them all the new smokes, and they review them, yep. and that you can organize yourselves around that. But it's a good point to get – we're not just talking about online resources now. It's good to get involved with any local cigar groups, mm -hmm. and sometimes you are part of a Facebook or a social media group to get you involved with those various groups, and they'll have regular hearths. We all get together and smoke cigars. The other thing, too, is to get involved with your local retailers and go to all of their events. I've learned a lot over the years – about cigars, about tobacco, from attending events at uh, various retailers. Mm -hmm. So get on all your retailers, local retailers mailing lists, and go to the events. Um, we, I've done blending seminars. Mm -hmm. Another great resource uh, and great way to learn. So it doesn't necessarily have to be online. Uh, my list was obviously focused more online. But I think it's a great point and a great segue kind of into be involved in your local cigar community. Right, right. Another one that... Uh Probably around 2014, 15, was Cigar Dojo. I don't know, you ever hear of that one? Yeah, and yeah. he's created, uh, Eric has created yep. a, a community. He's a great guy. We've mm -hmm. had him on the show. He's got a fantastic, uh, thriving and growing, a very large community. Mm -hmm. um, and he did uh, an app. Yeah, and well, I was just going to say. So your, yeah. the app is kind of like your social. He created his own social media network in an app. Yep. And I, I give Eric a lot of credit for that. That's a lot of work. Um, and he's been wildly successful, so yeah. I definitely wish him the, actually, the continued yeah. success with that because that's that's awesome. That's awesome. It's much easier to post on the Cigar Dojo app than it is on the Story Geeks website. Yes, <laughs> yes. You know, he has created you, that community. Because you, you can take a picture of it, you, 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 you tag it. And, and he did a rating. He came on the show and talked about the rating system they have mm -hmm. where you can rate uh, different. It's kind of like Hot or Not, which was the, the, the fa first before there was Facebook, he did Hot or Not, mm -hmm. right? It's kind of like that for cigars. Right, right. Uh, yeah, so Eric does a great job. You know, it, 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 it's got some some good resources in there uh, as well. Uh, also, um, did you ever hear, um, I'm sure you did, <laughs> you did right? Uh, Puff.com? Yes. Yep, Puff.com. I used Puff.com really early on to figure out what I wanted to try and smoke. Yep, that, that, it's, like, it's like amazing. You know, to me, they're kind of, you know, they, they, they started it. And when you look at the time 
when these forums came out and we can get the knowledge, like mm. I think it was a, it was ahead of the social media curve. It was you know, and then obviously with with Facebook, you know, I'm making it up, but seventy percent of the people who are on Facebook or whatever, mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing how more convenient it is to use a Facebook and and, right. and tag the friends or go into a group. And then yeah. another one I've used lightly in the past was Cigar Pass. Yes, com. I've heard of. Uh, I think yep. Mark. Mark so, Jr. was one of the – he was a Cigar Pass member. Yep. Yeah. And if you're into trading cigars – That's the, that's a great form yeah, for that. Yeah, it's a great yeah. form for that. And then also uh, Puro Trader mm -hmm. is is, uh, is good for for, for trading. And, and trading, I mean, I used to mm -hmm. be into it, but – I, luckily, I found myself a friend. It was Walter. Yes. Right? So who, you didn't have who, to bother. Was, you just, who was yeah. really into it. And it's like, oh, we can, you know, we know these guys in California. They want to trade that. But yeah, man, go for it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it was it was kind of, it was a lot easier to, to, to do that. Uh, it's not that I wasn't computer savvy, but to hang out. And, it's time commitment. And, and, and looking for that stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's good also because it is regionally specific. You know, it's amazing. That's why, like, whenever you go on travel, I always say, Stop in a cigar shop and always mm. look around. Take some time out in the humidor because, you know, it's amazing some of the stuff that you can find. I had one more, uh, two more, actually. Okay. Uh, so Cigar Journal, yep. which is a, a publication, mm -hmm. and I've referenced some of their articles on tobacco uh, in the past. And they also incorporate some interviews with, and quote, people from the industry in their articles about tobacco. So, sorry, I, I haven't muted my phone for this show. <laughs> and it's just going crazy. Um, so, Cigar Journal is good. I, I think Cigar Aficionado, in um, this context of this conversation, is where I go to not necessarily get information about particular types of tobacco or seeds or regions, but more to get a background story on the people in the industry. Right. I think they've probably done the best job in collecting that background information and really having that deep insider knowledge. So when I want to know about a person or a company, I will go to Cigar Aficionado. If I want to learn more about tobacco and the process, Cigar Journal has uh, more information on that, in my opinion. What I like about the switching back to the podcast, like, for example, Cigar Coop or Cigar Authority or Half Wheel, where they – where they give both the story usually, yes, and the blend, right. So you you, you don't have to go to one site anymore yeah. to find the, to get the story, <laughs> right? And then you go there, 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 there and and That's then have point. to go and get the blend. And, and I found this like one other one, dude. Leafonly dot com. Okay, never heard of it before. Um, it allows you to to it, you can show it on the screen. That's fine. We'll give them a free plug on the show. Um, I'd never seen this before. Uh, you get your own cigar rolling starter kit. Oh, boy. Now, I have no idea if this is any good or not, okay? I'll be on the street selling it. I'll be yeah. <laughs> well, you can buy this kit for $48.99. You can buy all kinds of different tobacco uh, as well on the site and, and roll your own cigars. I, Did I, you ever again, try to do that? Uh, I have not. I, I have. Um, it, it's an interesting thing to learn. I think you know you should learn it. Uh, I've seen other people do it. And this one has a DVD, and, and it's a whole kit to, to roll your own cigars. So, I, again, I don't know if it's any good. If anyone's used it, please write in. I'd love to get your, uh, your feedback. And maybe we need to buy some of these kits uh, and do uh, a segment on a show where we try and roll our own cigars with one of these kits. I think it would be a lot of fun. I um, had a couple events with a roller when I had a cigar radio show. Mm. And, and when I did our first live broadcast, it was at a place that you – couldn't smoke because of the, mm -hmm. new, the rules. And I'm like, well, what are we going to do? Like, I mean, mm. talk about cigars. No one can smoke. It's kind of awkward. It is. So I got a roller who rolled it for everyone. And then after the radio show, we had a promotion at a local cigar shop, which, which was near the venue. Mm -hmm. And then I started doing events with, with the roller. And I've, you know, always goofed around. Can, can I try it? Can I try it? Mm. You know, show me how to do it. You know, after you see it done five, six events, you try it. And mine, come, they come out a little loose. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I will not be. Uh, I, I would not make a good cigar roller yet. Yet, but uh, yeah. I think you need with, a couple with, more thousand hours of rolling. Before I think you. with with the DVD, and it's amazing because the rollers. I've been to other events, like for example, um, when Alec Bradley Tempest first came out, mm -hmm. they had a roller at their events, and they would actually roll you an actual Tempest. Mm -hmm. uh, there, that was pretty cool. We had that over at Donna's place a while back, probably 2012 or something, mm -hmm. and. Um, 
you know, it's amazing how, you know, the the, the role is like talking to you. Like While we're talking, they're doing it. It's, it's, it's like automatic. Yeah, you it's know? muscle memory and, for them. And, and they're so tightly packed. The way they have the... the oh, and the way they cut, yeah. They cut it on an angle process, and the yeah. angle. And, and they explain why they cut it because they're looking for the veins of the leaf. It's like a whole nother, mm-hmm. a whole nother craft. It you is. Know? Well, with that, we're going to take a short break, come back, and talk about our Stokies of the Week. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere.